Well, Roots, that last 10 minutes felt like it had enough football to fill up an entire game. Just I'll ask you about the other 80 minutes in a second, but what's your reflections on just that madcap ending? Yeah, just that. But that's that's football sometimes, and and you get that. Um, you know, when 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 you're playing away from home against a club like this, with those kind of fans as well, and you know, it's delirious and a bit of bedlam and all that sort of bedlam and all the rest of it, whatever the word is. <laughs> um, for me, it's simple. You know, the fighting qualities and the fighting spirit and the determination, the grit in this team um, was there, and they never gave up. And I've got to give the boys a lot of credit for that. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm really, really, really pleased that we got something in the end. Um, and, and like I said, it was mayhem. It was chaos and all those things. We thought with a player up, you know, we were going to tactically change something, but then we're attacking. And we don't put pressure on the ball. We don't win the ball, you know, in their own half. And they go and attack and get a corner and score from it. That's that's kind of how the game was. It was um, a lot of transitional stuff. We know they like to play in transition as well, particularly down our wings, down the wide areas. But like I said, I'm, I'm extremely proud that the boys just kept fighting and, and, and got a goal in the end. Is that one of the biggest things you've been working on since you took this job? Because previously this Wanderers side wouldn't have expected them to, certainly to come back at the end there. Is that one of the biggest yeah. things you've emphasised? Yeah, I'm glad you said it because they're the observations that I had as well prior to, to taking it on. And, and I think there's been a shift in mentality and something that we've been driving, you know, the last uh, six weeks or so. Um, and that's what this club is, is about as far as I'm concerned. It's, uh, you know, for me, um, got to go back to the values that made it so successful and, and and, you know, I guess it makes it easier for me because I understand the people from the West and I understand what the fans want from their team. They want a reflection of themselves and I keep saying that. But that's something that's got to be driven daily. Um, and like I said, you get your just rewards um, in, in games like today where, where we're probably second best throughout the game, I'm not going to lie, you know. Um, but they fought and they stayed in the contest and, and they never gave up and, you know, all those things that we've been working on, all right, the, the, uh, that's what I'm really proud of them, you know. And, yeah, like you said, an, an, another day prior in seasons gone by, you, you probably would have lost that game, you know. But we're starting to, to get some toughness about us now and that's that's something that I'm really proud of. And the rest, the rest comes, but the values, like I said, it's, it's really important for me that underpin this football club that I continue to drive because it's uh, in a short space of time, we're seeing a change there. You were dealt an early blow when Rami Nazarene was forced from the field. First, do you know what he's done and yeah. what the prognosis is? And two, just how yeah. big of a blow was that to your game plan? It was because we, we we changed those two wingers around for a reason. You know, we had we had you know predominantly left foot on the opposite side and and and, and Kinji as well on that side. So, like you said, the best laid plans. You can work all week on something and something like that happens, right? It's, it's a hammy. Um, we don't know the extent of it yet, but we'll find out. But he, he felt it, and it's difficult because you've got to re rearrange things and 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 um, yeah, there are other things there as well. We had a couple of players who who got sick like yesterday and, and didn't travel, so Dimmy didn't travel and, and, and Tomma as well. So it, it's starting to starting to happen. So Jared sort of was supposed to play, who, the, the boy that came on, Carluccio, was supposed to actually play in the NPL last night. Yeah, I wanted him to get some 90 minutes in, you know, because it's really important for the young players to get those those development minutes in, into them. But it was one of those things that happened yesterday at training and we had to you know refocus and, and find a solution very quickly. So I thought he'd done well when he came on, but it happens in the game. You just need to make sure that you plan properly. One of the players who really stood out was Daniel Margush. I mean, he made two massive saves in the second half, especially on Economides and Rojas. I guess, how have you seen his performances? I mean, started out of the team at the start, he's worked his way in, and yeah. how have you seen, I guess, his month since he's come back into Excellent, the team? excellent. Really, really good, you know. And 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 as, as coaches, we're there to facilitate and improve and, and help them, you know, along their journey. And, and, and Daniel's one that we've had, you know, had a chat individually with all of them, and we, we sat down and had a good chat about, you know, themselves and where they want to go and where they see themselves. In, in a month, in three months, and you know, looking forward in their careers, and and you know Daniel's, you know I've, I've worked with him luckily in the young Socceroos, you know, and um, and you know, I, you know Thomas Glover was there as well, and and one thing that I did notice with Daniel was is that he had great potential about him, but he didn't really believe in himself enough, and and whereas Thomas Glover used to walk in, 
at meals and, and really owned the place. And you can see he, he almost uh, mentally bullied him out, out of that position because they were very even, I thought, you know, and Thomas was coming from Tottenham at the time, right? So it's an area that Daniel needs to, to work on and really have a lot of self-belief. And a lot of them need to do that as far as I'm concerned, you know. There's, there's some really good players there, but they need to really believe and work extremely hard. And, you know, one, one thing with keepers, they've got to wait, win your points. He certainly won his points tonight, and there's no doubt about that. And, and he just has to keep working and, and believing in himself and, and make those big saves like we know he can. But he's improved coming out for crosses now as well. You know, he used to punch a bit now. He's actually making his game management is, is much better as well. So he's just, he's just one. Um, but he, he deserves to be mentioned because I thought he was outstanding tonight. You've got Jack Robball back as well tonight. I only yeah. played about a minute at the end or so. But yep. I guess, how's he progressed over the last month? I mean, is it just going to be a steady sort of um, integration back into the team after injury? Yeah, maybe. But, you know, James Trewis is the other one. You know, don't forget, we've, we haven't had them for a long time. And, and we've, we've had to make do without them. And they're arguably our better players. And, you know, when I first came, they were two of my better players. And then, unfortunately, they got injured. And, and it does hamper your, your progression somewhat. But... You know, look, if you, you look across the bench, if you're the opposition coach, it's something that I do when you have a look at, you know, what sort of players they've got that can make an impact when they come on. And to have someone like Jack and, and Jimmy there, on, on, you know, would have made um, a hell of a difference, you know, to the op opposition team, knowing that you can rely upon them. And, and James came on and done really well, I thought, as well. And, and, and Jack needs to, needs to build his way into it, but a great character. And, you know, he's, any, any minutes he gets, he's, he's a real good team player and he's just happy to help the team out. Does it make you feel then like you're in a, a good position to attack this last stretch? I mean, you're yeah. four points outside the finals places. Yeah. You're sort of maybe getting the cavalry back bar Rami tonight. Does it make you feel like you're in a good position in terms of the best is yet to come? I do. I, I certainly do. Um, I really believe in these players. I really do. Um, and and with those players back, like you said, you know, and you know, we've had a run of games now where we, we you know we haven't tasted defeat, which is always important. Um, you know, we're learning how to, how to do that. But the start has been inconsistent with win and lose and win and lose, and you know, you, know, try, you try to work yourself out of that inconsistency. But all you've got to do is be consistent with your messages every day. You know, and, and it takes a bit of time. And and like I said, we're that they feel like they can, you know, go into any game now and, and, and get a result or, or not lose, you know, but it's not how I coach. I don't coach not to lose. Um, I coach to try and win, but it's important that they start seeing that and, and believe in themselves. Um, just building off that as well, how important is it, obviously, you showed grit and determination in this match, and that's really what you've been discussing in this presser, but how important is it going to be to build off of that specific element of your game going into the last portion of the season? Very, very much so, because, you know, you, you get into these last run of games where there's a, a bulk of matches to be played. We all know that. Every club knows that. You can see how tight the league is. You know, no one's really getting a run right now, or maybe even apart from the top, top two teams. Um, yeah, but that, that's got to be there. Like I said, that, that's part of the values, you know, one of the core values as far as I'm concerned. And, and, that's, and that's starting to, to show now. And, you know, like I said, I think uh, no one would have given us a hope you know, one nil down in, in injury time to actually get something out of the game. And maybe you need a bit of fortune as well, um, but you've got to make that fortune by having that many bodies pushing up allowed you to maybe force them into a mistake, right? And second guess themselves, which is what they did um, with that penalty, you know, two players not knowing who's going to clear that ball. Derby, again, coming up this yep. week, obviously got the chocolates um, earlier this month. I mean, yep. how big is that now in the context yeah. of your season, this one coming up? Cause yeah, big. Sydney are on the brink a bit. You're chasing. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's, it's a big game for us, and there's no doubt. It's, it's one, let's be honest, it's one for our fans, you know, more, more than anything else. You know, obviously our football club's important, but the fans are the ones that really, um, that we'll be playing for um, next week. But that's next week, and there's, there's still a lot of week, you know, a lot of days to prepare for that game. But it, it's still, and in the scheme of things too, you know, we, you know we, we know that they've been a little bit up and down, but they're always dangerous, and we're going to give them a lot of respect as well. Are uh, you hoping to get anyone back for that game? No Tomo and no Dimi tonight? Are you hoping to get any of those guys back for next week? Yeah, yeah, we should be getting all of them back. Yeah, like I said, though, you know, Dimi had, you know, um, just a case of some fluid-like symptoms. It's not COVID, right? So that's important. Um, but no, it, it's happening, right? And we, we're seeing players struck down with that. And, and so we've got to be diligent in the way we prepare. There's no guarantees, obviously, but you just got to be smart, you know, in, in, in what you do and how you prepare and when you go home away from training. Rich, you just mentioned it then, COVID, it seems to be coming back. We've seen like the Jets. You yourself, um, you kind of missed that. Like you weren't at the Wanderers. You were maybe at the very tail end of it when the league's upheaval yeah, was okay. really happening yep. Yep. with yep. that. I was playing golf, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's your handicap? No, I'm kidding. Yeah. Um, so 9.1, 9 .1, yeah. Oh, there you go. So, but like, is that 
an advantage for you? You got to take a step back and look at which teams handled it well, which teams didn't figure out what they did well and what they didn't do, or is this going to be something that you're going to have to rapidly learn on the job? How do you approach that having not gone through it once already? Yeah, well, at my former club, I was I was in, you know involved in it, so I understood the protocols and the processes, and we spoke to all of them and understanding how to manage this type of situation. I understand the question this year, you know, I, I didn't partake in it per se, but I have experienced, you know, um, being a coach of a football club going through this COVID situation. So, like I said, it's about us being diligent, about us being smart, and it could be the separator, um, and it could be the difference between you know, teams winning games and maybe losing games. And so all, all that makes a difference. And, and the little one percenters make a difference too, you know, and the small details is always important, but you just got to trust them. You got to trust that when, they, when they're away from the football club. You know, as a football club, we do everything really well, really, very professional um, and making sure that's a safe environment. But, you know, when they go home and who they hang out with and the friends they invite over and if they go to a cafe or they go out, for, you can't stop them from li living their life, but you just have to be a little bit smarter about it. Just one last one on the game. Stephen Agarco, the man who stepped up. Yeah. Did you ever, ever, ever have any yeah. doubts? It looked very clinical. Oh, I don't look at penalties, but um, <laughs> yeah, I don't. Boys, what was key for me was who took the ball, right? Because I don't really have a designated penalty taker for me to feel confident at the time. And the first thing I saw and the first person who made a beeline for the ball was Stevie. And that was important, right? And, and uh, like you said, I'm yet to see it. But if, you, if that's what you said, I trust you. And that's what happened, <laughs> right? Yeah, okay. okay. Everyone cool? Thanks, Mick. Thanks, Dan.